Welcome to the Daily Race. Hey, today it's it's uh, the end of our study on Daniel. Uh, we've had a great time walking through the book of Daniel, that the first half being uh, the historical nar- narrative of Daniel. <laughs> Just a great picture of what it looks like to live in a culture, <clears throat> live in a community that's going in the exact opposite direction of God in a pagan society. And not just living there, not just putting your head down and just trying to survive, but but serving the leaders in that community, like doing well for them. I mean, what, what a great example Daniel has and what it means to be a person of integrity, what it means to, to honor God and to be working for him even though you're working for yeah, someone who's very, very anti-God. That's the first half. The second half are, are Daniel's prophetic visions. And most of them point to the fact that that they're not going to stay in Israel. It talks about world events that are going to take place, all pointing to the coming of the Messiah. The most specific of those was the the 70 weeks of of seven. And uh, we talked about how you can calculate that out. And it takes from the um, the moment where King Cyrus decrees that the the Israelites, the, the Jews, can go back and rebuild Jerusalem, all the way to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So very, very specific things. In, in Daniel chapter 11 and chapter 12, um, there, there's more specific prophecies, um, not necessarily covering new ground, but uh, retelling some of these. So in chapter 11, it says, Then a mighty king will rise up to power who will rule with great authority and accomplish everything he sets out to do. But at the height of his power, his kingdom will be broken apart and divided into four parts. It will not be ruled by the king's descendants, nor will the king hold the authority it once had, for his empire will be uprooted and given to others. Uh, that, that's prophecy about Alexander the Great. And from history, you know, that's exactly what took place. Alexander the Great didn't have any heirs. It was split among his, his kingdom was split among his generals. There was no stopping him until he was cut down by illness at a, at a relatively young age. Now, there's so many of these specific prophecies. It then goes in in chapter 11 about um, how these, these four leaders are going to fight the north and the south and, and all these things. And uh, we can... I don't necessarily want to get into the details here because the, the point we're, we're trying to share here is that it's almost unbelievably specific. Like, really? Like, could it really have been written when it was written? And, and that's honestly the skepticism of Daniel. Skepticism of Daniel is, well, it, it had to be amended after these dates. Like, it couldn't have been that accurate. It couldn't have been that specific. Well... As we read through it here, and in fact, even as we end here, it talks more about the, the final return of Christ, events that have yet to take place. So we're in between in, in the time of Daniel. Most of Daniel has been fulfilled. Jesus Christ is coming, went to the cross, but Jesus is coming back. And there's prophecy talking about that as well, too. So how, how, do, we, how do we resolve this? Like, like how, do, how much do we trust in the book of Daniel? Well, first of all, it's, it's part of God's word. It's been passed down from generation to generation. And the question that might float in your mind and and floats in some people's minds is, well, how do we know we actually have what was originally written? Like, how do we know that it wasn't added to? How do we know that it wasn't changed to kind of fit history, you know, after the fact and make it kind of line up? Because it seems oddly specific in in many situations. Well, this is a legitimate question for, for many, many years. Until 1948. In 1948, a young Bedouin uh, shepherd was uh, out in the uh, uh, just desert in, uh, area of ancient Israel, throwing rocks into a cave, as those little boys tend to do, just messing around, and heard a crack. What, what, what was that? He goes up, looks into it, inside are all of these giant uh, clay pots, and inside these clay pots are scrolls, scrolls of scripture. They were put there uh, almost 2,000 years before, uh, by the Qumran community. This was a, a think about it like a, a, a monistic, like monks going out into the wilderness, away from society, away from culture, to preserve uh, the word of God, to preserve the, the way of following Jesus during the times that Daniel's talking about. It's going to get bad, he tells. There are going to be rulers that are going to try and uh, push uh, the worship of God to the side. There's going to be corruption, there's going to be influence, there's going to be Greek influence, there's going to be Roman influence. All these things we know about Daniel and this group went out into the desert to hide from this, to, to, to honor God um, in a way that was opposite of Daniel, right? Daniel stayed and honored God. These guys left to honor God. Now you think, well, well, man, they weren't as brave as Daniel. Now that God, you know, 
must have been upset with them. Well, the fact that they left, the fact that they went out and hid, we actually, because of that, have most of the Old Testament writings, the oldest ones ever found, before the time of Christ. We actually have passages that these guys loved the book of Daniel. When we look at the different fragments, by proportion, there, there are a lot of fragments of the book of Daniel, uh, which shows their, their heightened view of this. this is more, they were living out the events of, of Daniel. They have copies of Daniel that go hundreds of years before the time of Christ. So this skepticism that, that maybe Daniel was written afterwards, and maybe that it was adjusted, we have textual proof, document proof, that it was written much earlier than what some people had thought. Before this, the earliest copy of Daniel we had was about 1000 AD. That's a long time, right? That, that's why the skepticism there. This backed that way up to before the time of Christ, uh, which makes a lot of these prophecies about Christ much more legitimate, much more uh, foundational. Like, wow, like this was, we know for a fact, this was written before the time of Jesus. Now, at the end of the day, what do we do with all this? One thing, it increases our reliability of scripture. That these things that are so oddly specific, if we know that these things were written beforehand, they came true, that means we can trust God's word. We can trust the way it's been copied faithfully over time. We can trust the way that God supernaturally preserves it throughout history. You know how many people have tried to, to get rid of God's word, have tried to destroy it, have tried to eliminate it, yet it always prevails because this is not just some natural book. This is God's love letter to us, God's word to us that he supernaturally preserves, supernaturally keeps for us to spend time with every day. When we think about all that went into to God's word, preserving it, copying it, passing it down, what a privilege. What a privilege we get to start our day with it each and every day. The fact that we live in a, a date and time where we can actually have physical copies of God's word here in our very own homes, that literally on, on our phones, We've got God's Word, not just one translation, I've got dozens of translations of God's Word on my phone, just at a finger touch any point in time. I think sometimes because of the accessibility, we forget how special it is. It's so unbelievably true that, that we forget how amazing it is. So as we finish up Daniel here today, we've got the two parts. We've got the historical part, shows us how to live in a culture far from God. And we've got the prophetic part that shows us that we can trust that God is going to do what he says. All right, let, let's wrap it up there. And then we're going to start a brand new study tomorrow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. And we thank you so much for the opportunity we get to spend in your word every day. God, today as we just start our day, we just want to spend some time thanking you. Thanking you for communicating with us. Thank you for, for not leaving it a mystery. Thank you for uh, your Holy Spirit guiding and directing the, the prophets and the apostles to, to write down these words so that we can read them here today. God, may, may we never take for granted uh, the purpose of your word. It's, it's to apply to our lives. It's to encourage us. It's to teach us to do the right thing. It's for, for application. It's to, to worship you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.